This recording is the first in a two-part series on simplifying algebraic fractions by cancelling common factors. And some algebraic expressions can be simplified if they have common factors on the numerator and the denominator that can be cancelled. And these common factors can either be individual numbers or powers of letters or algebraic factors. And in this first part we are going to consider factors that are individual numbers or powers of individual letters. Starting with this first example, suppose we want to simplify, if possible, 5x plus 10y divided by 25y minus 45z. And if we're going to be able to use cancellation to simplify this, a number or letter must be a factor of each individual term on both the numerator and the denominator. So looking at numbers first of all, here we have a 5 and a 10 on the numerator, we have a 25 and a 45, I'm just ignoring the negative sign for now, on the denominator. What is the highest common factor of these four numbers? And the answer is the highest common factor of these numbers is actually 5. So that means we could take the number 5 out as a common factor on both the numerator and the denominator. First of all, taking 5 out as a common factor, that would leave us with x for the first term if we put 5 outside brackets, plus, now 10y is 5 times 2y, so therefore it is 5 times x plus 2y. Similarly, on the denominator, taking 5 out as a common factor, 25y is 5 times 5y, minus 45z is 5 times minus 9z. So that is what we would get in that case. And then we can now see that the 5s just cancel from both numerator and denominator meaning that we are left with x plus 2y divided by 5y minus 9z. So that is a simpler form of our original expression. Now could we have also taken any letters out of this as common factors? There might be a temptation to think maybe we could cancel these y's since a y appears on the numerator and denominator, but that is not possible as y does not appear as part of the x term here or the 9z term here. Remember that the letter or number factor must appear for every term on both numerator and denominator if we're going to be able to simplify in this way. So let's look at a second example. And in this second example, once again, we have a mixture of letters and numbers. So let's look at the numbers, again ignoring any negative signs initially. We have a 9, a 3, a 21 and a 12. What is the highest common factor of those numbers? Well, it's actually 3, as all of those are divisible by 3. So we will be able to take 3 out as a common factor on both numerator and denominator. Now let's look at the letters. Can we take out a power of x as a common factor? Both terms on the numerator contain x. The first term on the denominator contains x, but this minus 12y squared term does not contain x. So it is not possible to take x out as a common factor if we're going to keep a reasonably simple expression. What about y? y squared, we have y to the 5 on the numerator. On the denominator, we have a y to the 4 in the first term. And in the second term, we have another y squared. So what is the lowest power of y of all of these terms, since y appears in each term? Well, clearly it's y squared. So that means y squared can be taken out as a common factor on both numerator and denominator. So 3y squared could be taken out as a common factor here. Now the next thing is optional, but you'll notice in this case each term on both numerator and denominator has a negative sign. So you might also like to take that negative out as a common factor. 
it's often thought to be simpler if there are not too many negative signs. Now let's see what we're left with. So negative 3y squared, looking at our first term on the numerator, which was negative 9x cubed y squared. What are we left with? Well, negative 9 is negative 3 times 3. x cubed doesn't appear out here at all, so it'll still be 3x cubed in the brackets. And the y squared term is already taken care of in this case. The next term, minus 3x squared y to the power of 5 times z. Again, we need to think about how does this relate to negative 3y squared if that's been taken out as a common factor? Well, again, the negative is already outside the brackets, so that'll make that a plus. The 3 is already taken care of, that's outside the brackets. But we still have an x squared here. And originally we had y to the 5. Now, if we've taken y squared out as a common factor, y to the 5 divided by y squared, that leaves us with y cubed. And z, that also stays there, as that has not come out as a common factor. Similarly on the denominator, minus 21, that's 7 times minus 3, so that leaves us with 7. The x still stays there. y to the 4, we've already taken y squared outside the brackets, so that leaves us with y squared. And the last term, minus 12y squared, that is 4 times minus 3y squared. So that's simply going to leave us with plus 4 inside the brackets there. So this is as simple as it's going to get. So once again, cancelling off the minus 3y squared from the numerator and denominator is going to leave us simply with the fraction represented by the terms in the brackets. That is our original expression simplifies to 3x cubed plus x squared y cubed z divided by 7xy squared plus 4. So have a look at our second recording in this series which will look at what we do when we have algebraic factors such as for instance ax plus b.